welcome in the last lecture we have seen introduction to bevel gear classification of bevel gear and terms used in the bevel gears now we will see further part in that first point is virtual number of teeth virtual means imaginary or formative as shown in figure an imaginary spur gear is considered in a plane perpendicular to the tooth at the large end rb is the peak circle radius of this imaginary spur gear and z dash is the number of teeth on this gear the gear is called the formative gear and the number of teeth z dash on this gear is called the virtual or the formative number of teeth therefore this is the bevel gear this spur gear is considered in the plane perpendicular to this bevel gear tooth on the back side gamma is nothing but pitch angle b is nothing but face width a naught is nothing but cone distance h a addendum h of addendum capital d is nothing but pitch circle diameter of the bevel gear this this is known as back cone and this is known as pitch cone therefore the formative number of teeth z dash is given by z dash is, is equal to 2 rb upon m where m is equal to module at the large end of the tooth and z is the actual number of teeth on the wheel gear also z is equal to d divided by m therefore z dash upon z is equal to 2 rb upon capital d now from figure triangle a b c sine of angle b c a is equal to a b divided by a c therefore sin of 90 minus gamma is equal to d divided by 2 rb therefore rb is equal to d divided by 2 cos gamma that is sin of 90 minus gamma is equal to cos gamma therefore z dash is equal to z cos gamma this is the expression of formative number of teeth now see this diagram it consists of a pair of bevel gears dg is nothing but pitch circle diameter of the gear dp is nothing but pitch circle diameter of pinion a naught cone distance small gamma is nothing but pitch angle of the pinion large gamma is nothing but pitch angle of the gear this triangle o a b is there therefore dp and dg are the pitch circle diameters of the pinion and gear is equally gamma is the pitch angle of the pinion while large gamma is the pitch angle of the gear line a b is perpendicular to o b therefore considering the triangle o a b tan of gamma is equal to ab divided by ob which is equal to dp divided by 2 divided by dg divided by 2 therefore tan of gamma is equal to dp divided by dg therefore tan of gamma is equal to mzp divided by mzg therefore tan gamma is equal to zp divided by zg similarly tan of large gamma is equal to zg divided by zp also small gamma plus large gamma is equal to 90 degree therefore the cone distance a naught is given by a naught is equal to square root of d p d r by 2 square plus d j r by 2 square now we will see force analysis in case of bevel gear in force analysis it is assumed that the resultant tooth force between two meshing teeth of a pair of bevel gears is concentrated at the midpoint along the face width of the tooth. This is illustrated in figure where the resultant force P shown by the dotted line. This is the force P shown by the dotted line. Acts at the midpoint D of the face width of the pinion. This is the midpoint D of the face width of the pinion. The resultant force has following three components pt that is tangential component or useful component in newton since phi it is useful component because because of tangential component only torque or power is transmitted pr is nothing but radial component in newton pr is also known as separating force or radial force pa is nothing but axial or thrust component in newton Now consider this rectangle A, B, C, D. A, D is nothing but separating force P, S. C, D is nothing but tangential force P, T. B, D is nothing but resultant force P and this is the angle alpha. 
consider the plane a b c d shaded by dots in figure and again shown in figure from the triangle b c d b c d tan of alpha is equal to b c divided by b d so for b c is nothing but p s divided by p t that therefore tan of alpha is equal to p s divided by p t equation 1 where p s separating component newton in newton alpha pressure angle in degrees therefore p s is equal to p t tan alpha equation 2 The separating force PS is perpendicular to the pitch line OD. Therefore, AD is perpendicular to OD. Line FD is vertical while the line OX is horizontal. Therefore, FD is perpendicular to OS. There are two pairs of perpendicular lines and their included angle should be equal. The angle between lines OD and OX should be equal to the angle between the lines AD and FD. The angle between lines OD and OX is the pitch angle gamma. Therefore, the angle between the lines AD and FD should be equal to the pitch angle gamma. Now consider this rectangle AFDE that is DEAF. Consider the plane DEAF so means the prompt angle ADF. We can write these two equations that is PR is equal to PS cos gamma and PA is equal to PS sin gamma. Substituting equation 2 in the above expression, therefore we are getting PR is equal to PT tan alpha into cos gamma, PA that is axial force or thrust force is equal to PT tan alpha into sin gamma. This is equation 3, this is equation 4. The tangential component is determined from the following relationship PT is equal to MT divided by RM where mt is nothing but torque transmitted by gears in newton mm Rn, rm is equal to radius of pinion, pinion at the midpoint along the face width in mm rm is equal to dp divided by 2 minus d sin gamma divided by 2 equations 3 4 and 5 are used to determine the components of the tooth force on the pinion the components of the tooth force acting on the gear can be determined by considering actions and reactions as equal and opposite. As seen in figure C, that is this figure C, the radial component on the gear is equal to the axial component on the pinion. This is the radial component on the radial component on the gear is equal to axial component on the pinion. Similarly, the axial component on the gear is equal to radial component on the pinion. Now we will see beam strength of bevel gears. The size of the cross section of the tooth of a bevel gear varies along the face width as shown in figure. This is the size of the bevel gear. This varies along the face width. In order to determine the beam strength of the tooth of a wheel gear, it is considered to be equal to a formative spur gear in a plane perpendicular to the tooth element. This is the formative spur gear at the large end. This is the SB nothing but beam strength. Consider an elemental section of the tooth at a distance small x. This is the elemental section dx at a distance small x. From the apex O having a width dx. Applying the Levis equation to a formative spur gear at a distance x from the apex, therefore delta S B is equal to mx dx into sigma v into y. This is the equation 1, where delta S B is equal to beam strength of the elemental section in Newton, mx is equal to module of the section in mm, bx is equal to face width of elemental section in mm, y is equal to Levis form factor based on virtual number of teeth. Therefore, from figure Rx upon R is equal to X upon A0 or Rx is equal to XR X into capital R divided by A0 equation 2. Add the elemental section Mx is equal to 2Rx upon Z which is equal to 2 into X into capital R divided by Z into A0 equation 3. Add the large end of the tooth M is equal to 
2 r divided by z equation 4 therefore from equation 3 and 4 m x is equal to m into x divided by a naught equation 5 also b x is equal to d s equation 6 therefore substituting equation 5 and 6 in 1 therefore delta is b is equal to m sigma b y x dx divided by a naught equation 7 therefore from equation 2 and 7 we will integrate this integration of rx into delta s b is equal to m sigma b y r divided by n of square into integration of x square dx that is equation 8. The left hand side indicates the torque mt that is mt is equal to m sigma b y r divided by n of square into integration of from a naught minus b to a naught x square dx which is equal to m sigma b y r divided by n of square x q divided by t which varies from a naught minus b to the a naught. Therefore, substituting these values, we are getting m t is equal to m b sigma b into 1 into r into bracket 1 minus b divided by a naught plus b square divided by 3 naught square. This is the equation 9. Assuming beam stretch s b at the tangential force at the large end of the tooth, therefore, m t is equal to s b into r equation 10. From equation 9 and 10, s b is equal to m b sigma b into y into bracket 1 minus b divided by a naught plus b square divided by 3 a naught square. The face width of the wheel here is limited to one third of the cone distance. Therefore, the last the last term in the bracket will never be more than 1 divided by 27. Therefore, neglecting the last term, we are getting the equation as b is equal to m b sigma b into y into bracket 1 minus b divided by a naught equation 11. Equation 11 is known as Levy's equation for b yes where s b is equal to beam strength of the tooth in newton m is equal to model at the large end of the tooth in mm b is equal to face width in mm sigma b is equal to nothing but permissible bending stress which is equal to s u t divided by 3 newton per m square y is equal to levis form factor based on formative number of teeth a naught cone distance in mm the term 1 minus b divided by a naught is called the b will factor in the above analysis, the beam strength SB is determined using the pitch radius capital R at the large end of the tooth. Therefore, SB is equal to MT divided by capital R. Therefore, the beam strength indicates the maximum value of the tangential force at the large end of the tooth that the tooth can transmit without bending failure. It is necessary to compare the beam strength with an imaginary force, PT, considered to be acting at the large end of the tooth. This component is given by P T is equal to 2 M T divided by capital D. The beam strength should always be more than the effective force between the meshing teeth at the large end of the tooth. The face width of the bulgear is generally taken as 10 times modulo or A0 divided by 3, whichever is modulo, that is B is equal to 10 times 10 M or 10 times of module or B is equal to A0 divided by 3, whichever is smaller. Okay, we will stop here.